So let's move to the first type, the feed-forward neural network. So as I said, the neural networks units are arranged in layers here, from the input layer to the um, where which holds the, the data through various hidden layers that perform the transformations. And finally, we arrive to the output of the model. So in general, the output can be a vector, even if most times is uh, for in a regression, for example, it, it often is a single scala, but in general, it can be an output. And as well here, the input layer, each one of these uh, circles here is a dimension of the data. So the data, the multidimensional input, get transformed and become some, um, some other data and get transformed and uh, this transformation continues for all the hidden layers till we arrive to some output and this output represents the label that we are interested in. If we consider one single uh, of this circle, of the, we call these neurons, uh, to make them connection with the with the metaphor of the of the network of the of the brain, but uh, we call them uh, uh, simply nodes if we prefer. So considering a single one, a dense neuron, it, it dense in the sense that uh, it's connected with all the previous, uh, uh, the, all the neurons in the previous layers or directly with the data. We have a structure of this type. So here is our data, our data, or again, the, the, the value at the previous layer. And here we have some, some weights and all what these neurons do very complex things, <laughs> he make a, a dot product, including uh, what is called here the, the bias uh, weight, and uh, he compute the dot product here, and uh, he run, it consider a, a function, and he run this function with this dot product as the argument. So in this case, we have two dimension, so the, the dot product will be uh, as is written here. So what we want to do is we want to learn this weight, this parameter, in a way that when we arrive here at the output, the output is as close as possible to our real uh, uh, label. So we can, this is one of the few things we can implement easily in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Julia. So we just make a structure dense layer where we have uh, two weights, weights with respect to the bias, that uh, is a, a single, uh, um, sorry, it's a scalar because it's, it's a vector because here we are not making a single neuron but we are making a full layer so here the layer will have as many bias as the nodes of the layers so this is why we are implementing here the layer so we have an array of bias then uh, the at uh, the same way the uh, weight with respect to the input is a matrix is a matrix of uh, which size. We are going to use it to multiply the previous layer and create some a number of values as in the in the destination layer. So the size will be the number of layers of neurons in the previous layer and the number of uh, neurons in the actual layer. Then the order depends how we multiply. And here we multiply by, uh, so by the, the, the matrix by the X. So here we'll have uh, the destination, mat the destination uh, number of neurons in the destination multiply by the number of neurons in the input and this mu this matrix here multiply x that is the vector is a column vector of the values in the previous layers and here 
is again a scalar addiction and uh, uh, we uh, we add the vector of the bias and all these one remember here is a um, is a broadcast so here we broadcast the function f over this one but at the end when we make this operation we have a vector so all this one will result in a vector and this what is it is the vector is the output and is a vector because the layer itself is composed of several uh, nodes so let's going to be a little bit more specific about the terminology so the, we already said the individual units can be called as nodes or neurons and the width of each layer is just the number of units in that specific layer, so it can be different in different layers. While the depth of the architecture of the of the chain of the of the network is the total number of layers that uh, go from the input to the the output, and the, the weights we normally here refer as W. Uh, and uh, are uh, what we want to learn, what we want the algorithm to 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 learn. And uh, uh, the aggregated input is uh, of the of the layer is uh, at least for the dense layers is take the forms that we saw uh, in the previous slides here. So this is the aggregated input, and this aggregated input, as we said, is the subject of these functions that take the name of uh, activation function. So the activation function works on what is being computed as aggregated input. So a uh, neural network unit is uh, uh, just one uh, input layer and one output layer, and uh, Hidden layers are those that are not in direct contact with the input or the output of the layers, are those in the middle. And uh, the, the word deep neural networks refer to neural uh, uh, network architectures that have at least one hidden layer. So one important thing, so while the weights uh, will be learned in, by the algorithms. All the other parameters, the width of each layer, the number of layers, the kind of activation functions, all these are elements that will be tuned as hyperparameters of the model, for example, doing, doing cross-validations. But there are some kind of uh, informal, uh, well, not really rules, but some indications of which kind of uh, parameters to use. Well, first, this is really a rule. The input layer must be equal to the dimension of the input data. At the same way, the output layer must be equal to the dimension of the output data. So in regression, normally is a scalar, but when we do multi-class, classifications, multinomial classifications, will have n dimensions equal to the number of uh, the n possible classes. And uh, the number of, so this is defined by the kind of problem that we have. The number of hidden layers instead is something that reflect our judgment on uh, how many levels we should uh, decompose our input to arrive to the concept expressed in our labels. And we'll see this point in particular when we'll deal with images. But often one, two hidden layers for classical uh, regression or classical cl classifications are, are enough. How many neurons in each uh, layers? Well, we should have enough layer to to uh, separate the the points or to arrive to uh, uh, to um, to be able the network to represent the structure the relation between the x and the y and uh, we should be some flexibility uh, but not too much because if you give them too many weights we risk to uh, overfitting and uh, this is often is one of the parameters that we really do cross validation with, with the number of neurons uh, in, in the layers. Are 
initial uh, g guess is to use about 20% more neurons than the input dimension. This is often works, uh, works well. With activation function, we are even better in the sense that we have uh, nowadays the, the, the heuristic lead to use a very few uh, activation functions of all the possible activation functions that you may image. In particular, there are two. Uh, one is tan h that uh, take uh, is like a um, take a s shape and uh, take so an infinite. Uh, the x, the input is on the infinite lane and it uh, map it to the interval minus one to one. But uh, this is starting to be less and less used. And uh, the, the one that is really used almost every day now is uh, the ReLU function. That is nothing else than an identity with a nonlinear point here with a maximum between zero and uh, and uh, x itself, and so this add some nonlinearity to the to the transformation while remaining very fast to compute and also very fast to compute the derivative. And also because uh, the, the, if uh, we are over in the positive uh, uh, part of the lines, the gradient is, is equal to, um, to 1. And so it limits the problem of uh, uh, what is called a vanishing or exploding the gradient. We'll see this aspect in particular when we'll, uh, when we'll deal with, uh, with uh, the algorithm to obtain the, the weights. But the idea is that we need to compute the, the, the gradient, the derivative of each weight, and some other functions will make it very difficult, uh, this task, while the ReLU is very efficient to keep the gradient manageable. This, for what it concerns, the activation functions of the layers that are not the last one, because the activation function of the last one actually depends on the nature of the problem that, uh, that we have. So if our labels are uh, uh, known to be positive numbers, we can use, for example, the ReLU uh, function. Uh, if we know that our if you are doing a binary classifications, will be a sigmoid functions that returns a probability between zero and one. If you are doing a multi-class, uh, uh, multi-nomial classification, we can use uh, the softmax functions that return a PMF of probabilities for each class. So there is the kind of problem that we have that uh, determine the activation function to use in the last layer. So, for example, let's see that we have a single layer with a single neuron and the input is two-dimensional x equal to two and four. And the weights that we are employing are for uh, the bias is two and for the weight with respect to the input is two and one. And the activation function is the sinus. So, which will be the output of this uh, uh, simple uh, uh, network? of this neuron. <laughs> so the output will be two plus two that multiply two and one that multiply four. And all this one will be the argument of the sine function. And the result, if you compute with a calculator, is minus 0 0.54. So you see here the importance of uh, making uh, uh, matrix uh, multiplications and uh, matrix multiplication, the good point is that uh, is easily parallelizable but by the underlying library that Julia as well, all the other software, uh, whatever is uh, MATLAB or Python or whatever they use, they all use at the end BLAS or some BLAS LAPAC implementation. And uh, uh, this can be run also on uh, uh, on a GPU or TPU. And this is why this uh, hardware is very used for, uh, um, so for neural networks, because at the end, the neural networks are uh, computationally a problem of uh, matrix uh, uh, multiplications. 
the bad point is that if it is low there isn't much that you can do to improve your code because at the end it's all uh, uh, a matter of the underlying library so there isn't much that individual uh, languages or you as the developer or the user can can do now let's assume that we know the label and uh, the label associated with our x is y minus uh, 0 0.6 so the output of our network was uh, z minu minus 0 0.54 and the true lab label was minus 0 0.6 it did pretty good job uh, it's pretty close but it's not exactly the same so there is still one element missing and uh, the last element to define a neural network is which kind of uh, met error metric we, we choose let's call it the loss functions to define the error between uh, uh, the predi predicted and the true uh, value. So here, again, we don't have much to choose, uh, luckily, I would say, uh, because uh, um, most often for uh, uh, regression jobs is used uh, the squared L2 norm, that is it, the squared Euclidea Euclidean uh, distance. And for classification problems, we use cross, uh, cross entropy. So we'll use one of these two uh, loss functions, and this returns uh, how much uh, 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 an error uh, between uh, our production prediction and uh, the true value so before we move to the next functions where we'll put all these uh, together and learn how to train the neural network to reduce this error here i want to make one observation first so neural networks a very powerful tools that can work on many sort of data and we will see however they require this data to first to be encoded in a numerical form as we see that the computation here is strictly numerical so for example if i have a categorical variable I need first to encode it uh, to a set of dimensions where each dimension represents a single class and I can encode it with an indicator function is my record is of that particular class or not. This one that I described and that is represented in uh, this uh, in this in figure here is the most simple phase form of encoding and take the name of one hot encoding so here i have three categories red green and blue so i make a, a column this is column for red this is the column for green and this is column for red yeah no sorry this one for blue so every time i make a red i put a one here and zero in the other and so on you can see here so the, the, in the practical times, I start with one dimension and I end up with uh, three dimensions here. And you may say, oh, but I shouldn't do this one. I should use only two because this is embedded in the, the information here is a linear uh, um, dependency of, of the other two. And yes, you are uh, OK, you are right. But it's not a big problem in neural networks. This one, if you have a linear dependence in between different uh, uh, columns, yeah, you are going to use a little bit more of a resource because you are using one column that you don't actually need it. But it's not a problem in the sense that it would be in uh, if you are doing a statistical analysis with it.